Good evening, and thank you for coming. Um, my name is Gary Weddle, and this is a, a presentation of my pilgrimage. Uh, the pilgrimage was made to the Baha'i International Center in Haifa, and it occurred um, from J July 18th to July 31st of 1993. And let me tell you, it's a long trip <laughs> over there. Um, it took approximately 30 hours to get there. Um, but it's Baha'i pilgrimage is, a, is an obligation to Baha'is and you have to have permission to go in my case I happen to be on, on what is called the short notice list and fill in for someone that had to cancel and so I didn't find out until uh, early June that there was a space open and I had to make make my travel plans real quickly to go um, they recommend um, <laughs> that when you're touring Israel, you know, along with your pilgrimage, that you uh, that you put your other sightseeing in front of your pilgrimage. Unfortunately, simply because of the, the fact that I was planning my pilgrimage at the last minute, I wasn't able to do that. I added one day in Jerusalem afterwards, and I see what they meant. I was done. I was ready to come home. Uh, but through the magic of slides, I took that set of Jerusalem and I put them up front. <laughs> And so this is Jerusalem. This is actually the uh, Mount of Olives. And I'm going to go through a series of slides panning to the right. And this is, of course, the, uh, the Mount where Christ gave the Beatitudes. And I'm actually standing on Mount Scopus, which in 67 belonged to the Arabs. And behind me was the uh, Hebrew University. And this is another shot. You can see the outskirts of, of Jerusalem to the right. And the outlying areas, of course, uh, the Mount of Olives to the left. And this is looking at Jerusalem. Uh, you can see, if you real look real close, um, the Dome of the Rock. And it's not going to stand out quite as much because, as luck would have it, while I was there, they were repairing the Dome of the Rock, and it's no longer gold. Um, and they're re-roofing re the dome. This is a shot directly below where I was standing, where I took those uh, previous series of pictures. And these are recently uncovered and believed to be crypts. And this is traveling toward Jerusalem and the, uh, the various churches. I believe the, uh, the church in the foreground is the Church of Mary Magdalene. Um, thank you. <laughs> and the one in the far ground is the... Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what the the name of the church is. It's where they uh, believe the Last Supper was held. And this is the recently ex excavated tomb of Zechariah that's back in the in the niche. They just found that within the last 15 years. And this is the Zion Gate going into the ancient city of Jerusalem. Uh, these walls were not there in the time of Christ. And they are they were built in about uh, 1300 A.D. By the, uh, the by the Turks, and this is a series of columns. These columns were in Jerusalem at the time of Christ. They went at that time. They went halfway through the city. They were tonnade, and this is where the open air market was held. And it was called the Kado. This is a copy of the earliest known map of Jerusalem, and is taken from the floor of a Byzantine church. And you can see the uh, series of pillars going through the center of Old Jerusalem, and that is the Kado. And this is the scene approaching the Western Wailing Wall, which is, of course, the holiest place for, for Jews. And if you look just beyond the cars, you can see a whole lot of people there. This was Thursday when we were visiting this location, and that is a day when Orthodox... And this is a, a closer view. Uh, it was very, very interesting going there because... Uh, they had weddings going on, they had all sorts of rites going on. Of course, as you get close, there's a wall that divides um, sections of the wall. The women, as they approach the wall, go to the right, and the men, as they approach the wall, go to the left. And you can see the Dome of the Rock behind, and you can see the construction as they're, they're recovering that roof. And going beyond the uh, Western Wailing Wall, this is on the Temple Mount. This is now an Arab territory. Uh, and of course this is looking at the Dome of the Rock and this is a place where uh, it's believed that uh, Abraham um, 
had the attempted sacrifice of his son, and this is also the point where uh, Muslims blow horse. And that, uh, that building is a shrine and contains a black rock, which marks the space where this is supposed to happen. And turning around in, in place, this is the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And again, looking beyond the, uh, the Dome of the Rock, and this particular build building is now an Islamic school. But it sits on the uh, one place that is known to be part of the um, Via Dolorosa, the, the road that Christ took to the cross. And this is the site where Mark Anthony's citadel was located. And they know that the Christ's trial took place in this location. The rest of the route is, pro you know, is most likely not original. It's, it's, it's lost to posterity. They, they have it and it's marked with stations that's simply for the sake of pilgrims. This is a typical street along the Via Dolorosa. This is one of the uh, less busy places where I had a chance to take a photograph as it narrows. It narrows as you go along and gets much busier and of course there are just tourist shops about every two feet. <laughs> and this is, uh, there are two places that uh, are believed to be uh, the place where Christ was crucified. And this one is the one that is traditionally uh, held by the Catholics to be the place where Christ was crucified. There's one outside the uh, I believe it's the I don't think which gate. The yeah. I'm not sure. It's, I'm not sure it's the Jaffa. I'm not sure it's the Jaffa gate or the. But outside one of the other gates in the city is the place that's believed to be the uh, crucifixion place, at least in the in the belief of the uh, Protestants. But this particular church is the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And on the side, this is the entranceway to that church. You see through that uh, and this is a mosaic of, the, uh, of Christ being laid to rest in the tomb approximately. Church itself is under the tutor, tutelage of the uh, Greek Orthodox. It is under, well, actually, the uh, m most of it is held by the Greek Orthodox. There are sections of it that are, that are owned and used by the Roman Catholics. Inside where they, they actually believe the crucifixion took place, there's a section probably as large as, as this room that's owned by the Catholics, and that's supposedly where Christ was stripped of his clothes and nailed to the cross. You go a few feet over, there's an area where they believe the cross was set, and that belongs to the, the Greek Orthodox. And so this is the way most of these holy places associated with Christianity is... Uh, and we'll get to the uh, uh, Bethlehem in a minute, and it's the same there. Sections of it owned by the Greek Orthodox, sections of it owned, owned by Roman Catholic. This is, the, this is our exit we took out of the, out of the city. Again, these, these gates were built by the Turks in about 1300. Mm. This is the, uh, one of the more notable monuments. It's called the Tower of David. It was built long after David lived on this earth and had nothing to do with him, and it was just named after him. Uh, again, it was built, built by the Turks in about 1300. Just another section of wall outside that gate. Oh. I need to go back. Um, um, this is the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. This is the square in front of it. And to the left you see uh, where the trees are is where a hostel where pilgrims can stay. And we'll go ahead and proceed inside. This is the old oldest existing church uh, and it was built in 400 AD and this is a section of floor that was recently uncovered uh, as part of the original floor of the church this is just one of the altars inside the church this is the main altar inside the uh, look real carefully you can locate a, uh, a Greek Orthodox priest there somewhere 
I believe there's one behind the lectern over to the left they had a, a uh, they had a mass going on while we were there and this is actually underneath that altar area and this is a, the, a cave or a grotto and it's believed that the uh, early shepherds actually used caves rather than, than buildings for their their flocks and so most likely Christ uh, was born in a cave um, and this is the the two altars in this area one again belonging to the uh, Greek Orthodox the previous one was a Roman Catholic you go down the narrow steep staircase yeah. there's another one of the areas down there you can see the old old lamps this is the uh, the only shot that I took this particular t day and mostly because of I had a real cheap camera <laughs> and uh, a lot of it was indoors and this is at the uh, Yad Vashem uh, Holocaust Memorial Museum which I found out was a series of museums and this is one that particularly interested me um, and this is the part of the museum is a tribute to the righteous Gentiles and this is a tribute to those non-Jews who risk their life in order to save Jews and one of the most famous of those was Raoul Wallenberg who was a Swedish diplomat they uh, for each one of these people that they have recorded as having helped the Jews they have planted a tree and put a plaque there are over 3,000 trees with plaques in this display this is just one of them and this is the this is the tree planted for Raoul and this is looking to the east and this is from my hotel room I stayed in one of the newer hotels called the Haifa Tower and uh, for those who know Haifa it's in the Haydar district uh, it's those who have visited there it is below and to the east of the shrines just a, uh, panning to my right taking in the mountain and get an idea of the growth of building that's going going on in Haifa. Uh, the building directly, the large building that, uh, to the uh, in the center is the largest um, synagogue in Haifa. What time of day were like pictures? This was early morning. This is an early morning. <coughs> Probably a couple hundred thousand, probably about the size of Omaha. Okay, this is uh, again just looking straight up the mountain. You can see some of the the two of the newer buildings, the uh, twin towers. One is residential, one is a hotel. And this is the first view. You can see the white section on the mountain. <laughs> above the buildings. That is the recent excavation that's going on. The clearing of the land for the, uh, the stair system that will go from the base of the mountain to the top. Now it's a little bit clearer in this picture. Uh, it's, over to the, it's over to the left. This is this is pan again panning to the right and I'm beginning to look at the harbor of Haifa. And this is looking directly at, out toward the harbor and you can see a US the sixth fleet of the United States is now stationed in, in Haifa and that's a US battleship. Sure. <laughs> These are the first morning I walked to the shrine of the bomb. <laughs> Strong. I I got a lot stronger by the time I was done. The uh, there are there are paths up and down the mountain, and they are called the paths of the thousand stairs. And I found out they weren't joking. If you can see how far they go up. And the, but these these actually veer off to the left a little bit mm -hmm. as you get to the top. And these are called the Shifra steps. Once you get to the top, this is on a, a street that bisects the properties uh, called Hatsunut. And I thought that was interesting because below the Shrine of the Bob and, abo and above the Shrine of the Bob, it's called Zionism Avenue. But as it goes by the Shrine of the Bob, it's called Hatsunut, which means Zionism Avenue in, in Hebrew. <laughs> 
And this is the plaque just as you get to the gate. And you'll see these all over Israel, at least, at least wherever we have a, a holy place in, in northern Israel. This is the path leading down to the, uh, the pilgrim house. And note the large tree. I believe it, I, mean, I think they told us, or, I, or someone can correct me, I don't think it's an olive tree. It's not an olive tree. The tall you, white one. The tall white one. The one that... But uh, you will find these sprinkled around all the Baha'i properties, and and uh, in this one, it's this in this particular case is right in the middle of the path, and uh, there's two reasons it's there. One is is this tree was growing there at the time Baha'u'llah was visiting this place, and two Israel doesn't allow people to to cut down trees without permit, so. The quick one, yes, I really was there. This is inside the pilgrim house, and this is just one around the shrine of the around the shrine of the Bob, and those are olive trees, and, and just more gardens around the shrine of the Bob. And I got real, real fond of these gardens. They are, they are of course famous. One of the uh, one of the Baha'is, one of the new pilgrims, asked a cab driver if he knew where the where the Baha'i uh, Baha Gardens were, and his eyes got about as big as saucers, and he says, do I know where the moon is at? <laughs> <laughs> this is, again, uh, late July, and it does not rain in Haifa for about, oh, seven to nine months. And so they cannot maintain a lawn, and so they just have to, have to lose it for a uh, period of time. But it still is beautiful. Just just another shot of the gardens. Front of the pilgrim house, and this is the gate and this and that pathway with those white stones we talked about that leads up to the shrine of the Bob. Of course, the the gardens are famous for having these urns and and lanterns, and um, I thought it was interesting. I found out where Shoghi Effendi got those. Um. It seems he was fond of going to estate sales in England. And so m many other chandeliers and urns and peacocks and other ornaments he's got for the garden, uh, he bought at auction in England. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that, that uh, really surprised me was the prominence of pictures and other models and, and what, what have you of the house of the house of worship in Wilmet. And this is a section, an extra piece of section that was made and shipped to Haifa uh, that is actually a, se uh, a duplicate section from the house of worship in Wilmet. And it's been prominently displayed there for about 40 years. And this is just another shot in front of the Shrine of the Bob. And for those who haven't gone on pilgrimage, this is as close as you can get to going into the Shrine of the Bob. The The that is the center door that goes in. Okay. Um, of course, the Bob was the forerunner um, of the Baha'i faith. He is so, sort of the John the Baptist figure for the Baha'is. And we also believe that he was a, uh, a messenger of God in his own right. And he was, uh, he was martyred in, in Persia. And he was, his remains were eventually brought here to Haifa. Um, and there's a long story about about his his life and his death and and, and how he managed to come here. But um, this is this is a nine sectioned building, and the center door leads. His actual burial vault is in the center of the building. This leads to a room next to it, with an archway that you can you can look in. The door to the left leads into another room that's also adjacent to the room where Abdu'l-Bahá is buried. And Abdu'l-Bahá was the son of Baha'u'lláh, or the son of the Fa'un as the, uh, the master or the uh, center of the covenant. And this is just a shot from above, and uh, just a detail of the corner of the Shrine of the Bab. Well, the, that is known as the uh, ringstone symbol, and it's it's in Arabic. We have a uh, you'll see a uh, Persian Persian version of that on the wall, 
and uh, it has a lot of different meanings. Literally translated means he is the glory of the all-glorious, which refers to the manifestation of God, to God's messenger. And again, just another another shot from the from the east looking west. This is the uh, circle of cypress trees that stands directly above the shrine of the Bab. You can see the the top, and this is where Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha sat, and and Baha'u'llah pointed out the spot where he wanted this edifice built. And so that is a special place for the Baha'is now. Couldn't resist when I was in Israel. This was a time when they were having um, shelling going on over the Lebanese border. At the time of hostilities, and there were a lot of army people mobilized. And this is a a particular group, a platoon of, of soldiers, and, and I couldn't resist taking the pictures of of them sitting there with their machine guns. The uh, but it took a little little bit of of work for me to get this photograph because I asked asked if I could take a, take a photograph, and they refused. And so I acknowledged that that I wouldn't do it, and started to walk off. And they're they their sergeant or their commander, who is a lady who is behind the man with the yarmulke, take the photograph because they do not like you taking photograph. They're military people. But this is directly in front of the uh, the pilgrim house. This is uh, across the bay. This is at the uh, old fortress of Akka, where Baha'u'llah was in prison. And this is the gate, like many gates. Um, they built at the time they they, uh, they either take a sharp right or a sharp left, and this is an, in is no different. It takes a sharp left into the city. You can still see the old iron gate that was there at the time Baha'u'llah was there, and he passed out of this gate on his way to uh, whenever he left the city. This is a uh, I have to apologize for this picture, but I couldn't resist. There were people that were enemies of the faith uh, that were living in um, Aga at the time that Baha'u'llah was here. And their purpose was they literally set themselves up to do whatever harm they could. And one of the things that they did was that they took a position just inside the gate where they could look for Baha'i pilgrims coming to visit Baha'u'llah to point them out to the authorities and to have them thrown out. And if you look in the center of this picture, it's rather small. But that is the that is the window of the rooms occupied by these people. Where they would stand and they would look for Baha'is coming to visit uh, Baha'u'llah. And this is the uh, this is the market. Place. It's been changed slightly, but it is the same market that, that was there at the time of Baha'u'llah. And this is out on the moat. If you look a little to the left of the center of the picture, you can uh, you it's looking down toward the Seagate, which is the place where Baha'u'llah entered the uh, entered this prison city. And lately, they have they have started putting uh, putting signs, putting putting fluorescent advertising signs around the, this gate, and which which Baha'is aren't real fond of because it's kind of important to us, but, th but they started to put advertisements up there. But This is the uh, this, is, this is the inn, which is one of the first places the Baha'is stayed after uh, um, when they first got to, to Akka. And that tower was built during the time of Abdul Baha, and it bears inscriptions that he was asked to to write for that. Uh, this is called a, an inn or a caravanserai, and, and animals were quartered on the first level, and people lived in the second level. And it's believed that both Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha stayed in the rooms in the far corner. The uh, this is the prison barracks and the, and the citadel. The citadel is actually out of sight to the uh, to the left. The two windows to the far right on the top floor of that building are the prison cell where Baha'u'llah stayed. And this is just another another shot of the building. 
and this is inside the building going up a stairs on the on the inside and they are it is this has been a museum it is now closed to the public and the Israeli government is doing a lot of excavation and it's a Baha'i's hope that, that this eventually gets restored um, to the way it was around the time of Baha'u'llah the work that's going on at the present time with this structure and this is just another look at the prison barracks the top, the second window from the right, is the window that Baha'u'llah would would wave at the early pilgrims. They weren't allowed to come in to visit him in the prison. The, the closest most of them could come was to stand on the outside of the moat and look. And most of all of them, all they could see was his hand waving a handkerchief from this window. And I have a shot, shot to give you an idea of what that's like in just a little bit. And this is just inside that prison area, uh, Baha'u'llah's cell is down the hall to the to the left a ways. This is the area where they believe that uh, Baha'u'llah's son fell through the roof after they'd been there for a, a short while. And uh, he landed on a packing crate and, with, and passed away within 24 hours. And, and there's a lot of significance that about his passing that, that I, I won't go into, but it was uh, a major event in the Baha'i faith. Um, but his name was uh, Mirza Midi and these are the stairs that he took to go up to the roof and he would he would walk on the roof and say his prayers that he lost count of his steps. He would count his steps so that he would be know where he was and he was so enwrapped in his meditation that he lost count and, and, and fell through the skylight. And this is the shot from across the moat this is where the early pilgrims would stand to give an idea how close they would they would actually be that at the time of a hollow that moat was full of water these people would walk all the way from Persia to form this pilgrimage and many of them this is as close as they ever got this is just a a group of um, group of pilgrims leaving uh, leaving the citadel in the barracks and I just couldn't re couldn't resist this shot because our time to come very close friends. And this is a uh, I just couldn't resist taking a a picture of the sea <laughs> while I was there. And I told you a story, a little story before we started about the uh, about our guide named Leslie, uh, who stands in the middle in the flowered skirt and the and the uh, the bonnet, and she gave me permission to take one of those white stones back to a to a native of Haifa. And she was, she's Irish, and she just introduced herself as Leslie. It wasn't till toward the end of the pilgrimage that we learned that her name was Leslie Teherza Day, <laughs> that her husband is a member of the Universal House of Justice. <laughs> of course, the uh, Universal House of Justice is now the supreme body that, that governs the, the activities of the Baha'i world. This is the uh, House of Abud. Um, at least the section of it that is toward the sea and um, it's actually two houses together um, the house of Abud and the house of and, and this section of it the house of Udi Kamar and Baha'u'llah spent approximately six years living here and and toward the end of that his main the arched balcony this is an interior courtyard where you enter the house of Abud where you can uh, you can ascend and this is as far as in, I don't have many shots of the interiors of the building because most of the time they would not let us take photographs. This is as far as I could take my camera. Um, this is, uh, of course, the mansion of Mazrai. is a um, building outside to the to the north of of Akka. And as Baha'u'llah's imprisonment was relaxed, he was allowed to go here and and stay. And this is. Uh, particularly like like this very much because from it you can see the room where he stayed that has the white door from that room he could see the uh, sea to the west and you can see the the plains to the uh, plains to the east and and to the north it was a very very beautiful spot just standing at Masrai looking past where I took my original photograph of the gardens there and they're also beautiful.
is in, in in an interior courtyard. When we were there, was we get, got to have lunch there, and this is a, a group of fifty of us inside an in, uh, interior hall. This actually was at the time of Baha'u'llah. This was a uh, a covered covered, but oh, it was open. They did not have the walls there, and they added those later. And this is the uh, this is the staircase ascending to the room of Baha'u'llah. And again, the outside walls to the right were not there at the time of Baha'u'llah. This was, like I say, a, an open area. Again, again, this is just another shot from the outside of the building. You're looking on the uh, the western side. And again, the room with the, the white doors is the room that was occupied by Baha'u'llah. And this is in the Garden of Rizwan. It's to the east of uh, Akka and to the south of Masrai. And this is a uh, a spot where Baha'u'llah loved to go. And it was kept for him. And it's a very, very beautiful garden. This is the this is from the inside and that's the uh the grape arbor. Can you explain the importance of the hmm? Garden of Rizwan? Uh Rizwan is a, a Persian word that means paradise. Uh, and in this particular case, it was referred to as the, gar the Garden of Rizwan. Uh, as Baha'is know it, is actually a garden outside of Baghdad where Baha'u'llah made his declaration of his mission. Now this is also entitled the Garden of Rizwan because, because of its beauty. This is just one of the paths uh, in that garden. And I was amazed to see so many uh, geraniums and, and uh, And marigolds. It's just a, a fountain in the middle of that, with the uh, with the runnel carrying water away from it. This is another look at the at the garden. I just I was amazed at the geraniums because, of course, they they really don't have winter here, so they don't dodge. They are so huge. This is a little garden, a uh, little house, to the. Uh, in the south, southern part of the garden where Baha'u'llah would stay and we got to go in and, and spend some time in that room. That was another place we didn't get to take photographs. Yeah, quadrangle of, of seating where everyone one was sit and this particular place that was has the uh, the little uh, scotch pines in front of them, the little pine trees are where Baha'u'llah would like to sit. This is at the mansion of Baji and I was um, amazed at the size of this particular place. Baha'u'llah spent the last uh, 20 some years of his life living here. And this is a stand, standing outside of the, uh, the circular area uh, known as the Aramiakdas or the Holy of Holies. And that pathway is leading north. It's about a about hundred yards. This is the uh, this is the Collins Gates and you can see the actual uh, shrine of Baha'u'llah beyond those. These are just some of the gardens, for, uh, cactus gardens, and this is taken from the uh, I, I mansion of Baji, excuse me. The, to, the, uh, to the right you can see a, a series of, of tiers and uh, Originally, there were many buildings located around here. They were occupied by mem members of the family. Uh, not, most of them not friendly uh, to the Baha'is. And when the Baha'is were finally able to take full custody of this property, one of the first things that Shoghi Effendi did was to have these buildings that were really kind of eyesores around it, had them bulldozed. And he had them just moved into this, this series of tiers. He built the first two tiers and had them gar landscaped. And one of the reasons that he had that done was just so that he could stand on them and view the gardens. Plus it sheltered the other gardens from the prevailing right. winds coming in off the desert. Right. And this is just, just on the... Uh, Miranda, I'm trying to. There was another word that I was thinking, trying to think of, of Masrai. Uh, 
And this is looking on the Akdas. And again, this is like the shot previous of the Shrine of the Bob. This is probably as close as you'll get to going into the Aramiakdas, short of being a pilgrim and going. Of course, the Aramiakdas is the place where Baha'u'llah is buried. And this is again looking down the colonnade of uh, Baji. Looking over the rail of the gardens and the, the gates. This is on the far this is on the far end of uh of the the mansion and uh the rooms at the uh, far end are those that were occupied by Baha'u'llah when he lived here. Looking over the balcony from, from where his room would be. And they, then again Baha'u'llah's room would be Blue and white. Uh, we asked that, and uh, our guide told us that no, <laughs> that it, it's just rather it's rather customary around the Mediterranean for buildings to be painted white with blue shutters. You'll see this in 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 Greek islands, and and you'll see. Uh, it's really pretty. Oh, it is pretty. You also you also noticed. Uh, I sh if if you noticed on the. Uh, I, I won't go back, but if you noticed on that uh, portico, there were there were paintings above the windows. Those are Turkish primitives. They have no significance either, but they they're just excellent example of, of Turkish primitives, and so they left them there. And they keep maintained. I mean, yes, yeah, they're they're works of art. They're they're they're. They're just a look at some of the gardens, and these are these. These gardens are inside what's called the the uh, the Aramiakdas. It, it is a, a circle of approximately what 75 to 100 yards in, and that that entire area is known to the Baha'is as the Holy of Holies. It's not just the building; the whole area. Again, just, just some more of the gardens. Uh, just looking across the gardens up those tiers. And it's another example of of the eucalyptus trees standing in the middle, and they were here again at the time of Baha'u'llah, and they were left. And the gardens were were laid out absolutely oblivious of where these trees were. The uh, Universal House of Justice completed the third tier on this section, as was Sh uh, Shoghi Effendi's wish, and I believe they did that in the uh, mid to early 1970s. Well, Shoghi Effendi was uh, Abdul Baha's grandson, and after Abdul Baha's passing, Shoghi Effendi was uh, was named in Abdul Baha's will as the guardian of the faith, and he served as the as a head until his death in 1957. We've mentioned the also build by the same Udi Kamar, and his grave is in the wall behind this hedge on the far end, past that gate, and, and it's not even marked, but but he has the privilege of being the only other person buried on this property. And again, just another look at the, uh, at the mansion. This shows the entranceway. Something that I found interesting about all the buildings there was the living space was all on the second floor. Of all the buildings we went in, I never saw the first floor. <laughs> in this particular case, a lot of, uh, at least a good third to half of this building is open colonnade and archway underneath and some of its storerooms and and util utilitarian rooms but the living was done on the second level uh, recently the uh, Universal House of Justice had Heim Herzog excuse me uh, here and they had a banquet for him under those colonnades and this is just uh, showing the uh, a lot of the walkways are this uh, this red clay tile. These are from the roofs of those houses that Shoghi Effendi had destroyed and had those tiles crushed. And they make a make a wonderful walkway. And this just shows the, the entrance to the around, uh, to the uh, the shrine. Another view down the path toward the toward the shrine little building I couldn't resist taking a picture of it it's actually outside of that circle outside the the Aramiakdas and there's a little sign on the stairs when but uh, this building was built by Shoghi Effendi and it was used to store his maps and gardening tools 
and he also was would go up those stairs and stand on the roof to view the gardens. He literally laid all these gardens out by hand. Um, probably. But he, but, but he, to 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 plant them and, and put them in, and, and most of it was was he he didn't use. <laughs> But uh, he stood on this building to survey those gardens. I know on the uh, on the stairs they had a little sign there that they were unsafe for for human passage to and that you should ascend in spirit only. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, back in the uh, city of Akka, and this is one of the buildings that they've opened up in the last two years. And this was a house occupied by the Baha'is after uh, Baha'u'llah's passing. And it was occupied approximately from 1895. on for about the next, what, seven, eight years. And this is called the House of Abdullah Pasha. And this is also the, the uh, home of the governor, government. This is just under that entryway, with one of the pilgrims exiting. And this is one of the scenes you see inside the interior courtyard. And this is actually looking toward the section that was occupied later, which was actually the uh, the residence of the governor. The opposite corner of that square. And this is the, uh, the section of the building that was immediately occupied by the Baha'is. Those are the those are the stairs that, that Shoghi Effendi would race up and down when he was a youth and that his family became so concerned because they didn't have a railing at that time. Just some of the some of the pilgrims. These are uh, uh, the Rohanis that were from Canada and on their way to the South Pacific. And this is uh, another some more of the pilgrims with us around chatting with our uh, our guide. I took this picture just to give you an idea of what the inside of these rooms looked like, because most of the time we weren't allowed to take a picture. This actually this section of the building was occupied by a uh, a European doctor. That wasn't uh, that wasn't terribly friendly with the Baha'is. Didn't didn't like them very well, and uh, they had to had to pass by him. I think they eventually won his won his favor, if not his allegiance. But it took many many decades to do that. This is another shot of the outside. I took this particular shot in, in order to get the little building that was on top. That was recreated, but that is similar to the one that that uh, Abdul Baha built on top of that building. And there are several reasons he did it. One, Abdul Baha suffered from humidity. He was he his health was uh, damaged from the many exiles that they took when he was young and his feet. And uh, he often took rooms that were outside the reg main houses, had them lined with cedar to get some sort of relief from from his sufferings. And this this particular building was was also the the case, but also it's interesting because from this vantage point you can all you can see both the shrine of Baha'u'llah at Baji and the shrine of the Bab in Haifa. This is Mac. This is back in Haifa, and this is on Haparsim Street that runs up and down the mountain. And we look at a building that was built on the Western Pilgrim House and for many years served as the seat of the Universal House of Justice, where they met. And from where I was standing when I took this picture, to my left is the house uh, that Abdul Baha built and lived in after, the, uh, after he was released from, from prison house uh, that we got to visit. And just inside the entranceway to the right, Again, there's another room um, for most of the time, Abdul did this little building that was actually out front. And uh, again, he had the, in the upper room lined with cedar for his own comfort. And the, uh, the relatives did not like the fact that he lived out here at all. And toward the end of his life, he made the comment that it is time for these, uh, this house to be destroyed. And the uh, the relatives automatically presumed that he meant he was going to tear this down, and they were thrilled that this eyesore was going to be, be be ripped out. What he was actually referring to the, was alluding to the fact that he knew he was going to pass away soon. That house 
house because we found out that the roof leaked in it. And uh, it reminded us of our place. <laughs> when it rained, which didn't happen very often, that they would have to go around and put little containers to catch water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we were doing in our place. Also. Yeah. This is this is below the high properties. Uh, this is one of the German Templar buildings that were there at the time uh, the Baha'is arrived in that Baha'u'llah and and uh, his family arrived in uh, the Haifa area. And this house is famous because the over the uh, over the actually what used to be a door on this side in the center is the inscription "Der Herr ist nigh." Moved to this area, waiting awaiting the return of Christ. Of course, this is the obelisk on Mount Carmel, um, and it's toward the west, west of the Shrine of the Bab, and it is where the uh, future house of worship on Mount Carmel will be built. And again, just a, a shot of the pilgrims. It was interesting, they, they noted this actually sits on the, uh, on the top of the mountain, and they mentioned that, that, the, uh, that the house of worship will be built on the head of the mountain, and that the shrine of the Bab lies on the breast in the heart of the mountain. This is uh, above the shrine of the Bab. This is on the ark. This is the seat. Uh, this is the uh, uh, archives building, of course. And uh, you can't see, but there's a, just an, uh, you'll see shortly. There's a monstrous hole to the uh, to the left. These are. This is in called the our the nearest one is the uh, the resting place of the wife of Baha'u'llah. She, she was known as uh, Nawab. Her proper name was Asiya Khanum. And the far monument is the uh, the resting place of Mirza Midi, who was Baha'u'llah's son, who was who was killed when he fell through the skylight in the uh, prison barracks at Akka. It's on the uh, on the eastern section of that strip, and this is the resting place of uh, Baha'u'llah's sister, or daughter, excuse me, uh, Bahia Khanum. Thank you. <laughs> this is just the path leading up to that uh, that resting place. And actually a little bit lower, and this is the uh, resting place of the wife of Abdul Baha, Munira Khanum. This is on the uh, roof of the seat of the House of Justice in the center, and, I, and I'm going to have to apologize for the next sequence of, of pictures because they, they tend to wash out. But again, look at the dome. If you haven't noticed, the dome is in the same shape as the monuments in the Monument Garden. It, it was, and they continued that theme. Over one end to the, uh, the hidden parking garage uh, building, uh, parking and also storage left before that last photograph was taken and unfortunately because it washed out because of my poor camera you can't see the depth of this this is the excavation for the uh, International Teaching Center uh, that is going on and that is a from that driveway that comes in from uh, from the street is a drop off of about 30 feet and again because of the poor quality of my camera I didn't get too many shots of the inside of the uh, seat of the House of Justice. This is one, this is again a place where we were allowed to go for the offices of the Universal House of Justice and this is Secretary's receptionist desk right right there. At the end of this hallway you can of course see the uh, the portrait of Abdul Baha. There are only two portraits in this building and who can guess who the other portrait is? No. No. There's only two portraits here. The other one is the Samoan king, the Malia Toa Tanumafili. And that is actually on the wall immediately to, to what would be my left. Because of his significance. He's the first king to recognize, first reigning monarch to recognize Baha'u'llah. Hmm? Yeah, she was a she was a dowager queen, but not. Um, I'm not. A few years, not that long ago, mid 80s. He's still alive. Yeah. Part of the um, again, most a lot of my shots did not turn out, but this is one that, one that did. This is one of the ends of the main dining room, which is also the library. 
when this used for formal occasions. This is the uh, again the main the main formal dining hall inside the seat of the House of Justice. It's only used for for formal occasions. The last thing that they had here was a uh, commemorating her 50 years in the Holy Land. And of course, Rahia Khanum was the uh, the wife of the guardian of Shoghi Effendi. Well, she wasn't wasn't there on this particular occasion, which was one of the disappointments of my trip. But uh, but she lives, of course, in the uh, second floor of the uh, house of Abdul Baha. This is in the main uh, main concourse, and uh, unfortunately, it doesn't show the vastness of this area. But this is where they receive formal visitors. This is where they receive the pilgrims formally. Again, I'm going to have to apologize for this picture, but it's the only way that I could get this entire thing in was to turn it cockeyed. So if you want to turn your bodies to the left 45 degree angle, you can get an idea of this is the current model of the, uh, of the fountain and stair systems that are, that are both going to be below and above the Shrine of the Bob. And again, this is, I'm going to have to apologize for the quality. This is standing in front of the Shrine of the Bob looking out toward the sea, toward the north, and shows the construction. And of course, that's all the white is the white earth that has been exposed uh, while they are constructing these systems. And the thing in the foreground is the fountain. The day that I left, they were testing the fountain. Just another shot, a little bit further back, maybe a little bit, a little bit clearer of that fountain on that on that level. What it's going to look like, which is you can see that a Anybody that's been there previously can see that a lot of shrubbery has been been moved. They did not destroy most of it. They took most of the olive trees and and most of the uh, um, palm trees, and uh, they replanted them on the on the Temple Mount plot. And this one again, just looking over that that uh, that wall retaining wall giving an idea of the arched garden areas. Some people, uh, most of you have probably read about the new uh, uh, retaining wall that was added the uh, to the, actually to the uh, east of the Shrine of the Bob. One of the things Shoghi Effendi wanted to do and wasn't able to do was to make the terraces to the east as wide as they were to the west of the Shrine of the Bob. And because of the way the mountain lies and the steepness of, the, of, of it at this point, it was not possible until now. This is a new section. They have a slide out of, out of sequence. These are back in Jerusalem. Even though, I'll have to apologize, these are out of sequence, but these are... Uh, this is the uh, Church of the Nativity. This is the Catholic Church of the Nativity. There, there's actually two there. The old one was the uh, that you saw earlier was the Greek Orthodox Church of the Nativity, and this is the Catholic one that stands next to us. This is considerably newer. This is about uh, uh, this is about 70 years old, as opposed to. And we are, we are working backwards. This is over St. Louis on the way back. Mm -hmm. And you can see some of it, some of the darker patches. A shot of, of, that, uh, of that flooding. The white thing, the dots you see down there are farmhouses. You can see the main channel to the left. Uh, approximately, yeah. Approximately. So you're out of order. Yeah, they, <laughs> yep, I got a look at my see what we got. Yep, I got a section. This is in the Garden of, of Rizwan. We'll, we'll get to go back through again. <laughs> back to Baji. We're on St. Louis and make it a real experience. Yeah. <laughs> this shows, this is as good a picture as I could get 
in the seat of the House of Justice of the models they have for the uh, for the Ark, and you can see the uh, to the to the left of the House of Justice, the uh, International Teaching Center, and to the right of the House of Justice, the uh, Center for the Study of the Text that's being built currently. Do, however, my camera was <laughs> not up to it. This is actually the the shows the staircase of the, in the main reception hall. Not from that staircase, showing the main entrance way. And this is uh, looking up from Abba Street, up the mountain, and they're in the process of of pouring concrete in a retaining wall on Abba Street. This is from the house seat, the excavation that's going on for the. Uh, and again, it's probably about half again as deep as it actually looks because of the washout on the film. But to the far left is a retaining wall. They actually built that retaining wall from the top down. As they excavated, they put a section in, they would drive drill into the mountain and drive rods in and, and cement these rods into the mountain and then work with their way down. The building will eventually be nine floors tall. Six of them will be underground and not visible. This is going to be the center for the study of the text, and it'll actually connect with the uh, archives building. This is just looking up the mountain from Ben Gurion Street at the work that's going on. They've made they've made such a mark on that mountain that it's clearly visible even from across the bay at at Aka. And again, I tried to get a shot of, of that retaining wall. And it's just. And this is this is just a shot from in front of my hotel taken for a friend and it shows some of the shops in Haifa. And the these things must have gotten shuffled badly. Again another another lake. That's the main river at the top, right? That's right. The rest of it and the rest of it is the rest of it is flooding. Ocean of of Again you can see the the channel, one of the channels in the center. Clicked a lot of photos. <laughs> I think they're put the we'll skim by these real quick. Landing there. All the flooding. But that's it. Well, thank you very much.